video and uh, please you also can switch on your videos so that we can begin and uh, yeah it's very cold but <laughs> if you all are in your reside then also it is very good well protected in this cold and uh, yet busy with our studies right so <clears throat> waiting for godo in this uh, godo uh, okay first of all let me tell you that have you taken the attendance all the videos are on yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am okay 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 then it's well and good so here we begin right am i audible yes, yes ma'am ma yes ma'am okay. okay so see in our first unit we have done uh, drama what is drama and what are the various kinds of drama and in various kinds of drama we did so many dramas and uh, one uh, kind of one category that i uh, just uh, you know touched upon and did not go in detail was this one because i thought that it's better that we go through the drama first and then we decide the characteristics and see how this is theater of absurd this kind of drama which uh, you are going to study now it falls in the category of theater of absurd a b s u r d absurd okay and uh, uh, who's the dramatist samuel beckett okay Samuel Beckett. Now Samuel Beckett is an Irish writer. See, uh, you have studied Norwegian writer, okay? Then uh, English writers, that means who belong to England. And here Samuel Beckett is an Irish writer. He belongs to Ireland, but uh, actually, you know, whole of his adult life was uh, spent in France. And he was very much influenced by uh, that French resistance. Okay, and uh, uh, so you find that influence, influence of uh, French Revolution, uh, these things also in his drama. We shall see how. Okay, and he has written many uh, novels also. Basically, he is a novelist. But of course, we have this drama, and he has written few uh, dramas. Uh, and uh, this uh, waiting for Godot. This was, you know, originally written in French, and then and then it got translated into uh, English. Okay. And uh, he was uh, this writer was also awarded uh, Nobel Prize for Literature in uh, in in 1969. I can't forget this year 1969 because that's my year of birth. Right, so it's 1969 that he was uh, uh, awarded Nobel Prize for Literature. Now, this theater of absurd. You know, the what uh, what do the dramatists uh, usually explore in such kind of drama? Since it is written in 20th century, so usually the themes are like search for self. Who am I? Right, search for self, and then the hollowness of Western culture, two world wars, and then scientific developments, trying to achieve everything. Yet, what is present inside, inside the man? Uh, spiritually, where does, uh, where can you place man, human being? Okay, so that hollowness of Western culture, and then. You know, after fighting so many wars, the question arises that who are we? Why are we here? What is the purpose of life? So that absurdity, you may say, absurdity of uh, life is also there. That is why it is theater of absurd. So search for self, hollowness of Western culture and absurdity of man in this world. The purpose of existence. Why do we exist? This is to be found. So basically, you know, such dramas, they are uh, really very um, uh, serious in theme. 
so they are very serious. So uh, this is what we are going to do here in this uh, when we are going to study uh, waiting for Bodo. We are we also <coughs> come to know about the theater of absurd. Okay. Now what is you you would have heard and you use this word so much absurd. What do you mean by this word absurd? Can anyone tell? Ma'am, something which does not make any sense, something which is just really? not yes. understandable, something which is just beyond, uh, beyond you know, something understanding. Which under, uh, beyond and, understanding. Basically, and basically, you can say it is, you know, opposed to reason. Everything, you know, whatever happens around, we find a reason. Okay, this has happened because this may be the reason. We have some causes we feel. But in theater of absurd, they are trying to uh, show that there, uh, there is no reason taking place around us. Things happen, they just happen in a ridiculous way. Okay, so absurd also stands for opposed to reason. You cannot find the reason that why such a thing is occurring. Why are we born? When we have to fight, we have to die. Otherwise, if we don't uh, uh, fight, then we would may die of disease. It may be because of uh, some old age, but finally it is death. So why have we come to this earth? Something very, you know, depressing it may sound, but yes, that was the age of depression. The people were talking in this way. OK, so now uh, whatever you have studied that like Aristotle said that these are the features of tragedy there should be unity and uh, who is a tragic hero and all those things now you have to forget all that here because here you know these things are not at all followed that is why everything is just nonsensical dialogues they would be having there there is too much of clowning and there seems to be no faith in God, no faith, no religious or, you know, even spiritual or transcendental uh, something that is beyond human understanding. They don't believe in that. So the term that is used is metaphysical anguish. Metaphysical anguish is also metaphysical anguish. A-N-G-U-I-S-H anguish metaphysical anguish is also one of the characteristic of uh, of theater of absurd anguish what is, does it mean yes i'm explaining anguish is sadness okay despair mm -hmm. feeling of loss metaphysical is beyond physical Metaphysical is like even if you don't believe in God, there may be faith that something exists beyond human understanding, some superpower. This whole world runs because of uh, uh, some kind of power existing beyond the control of, uh, you know, uh, supernatural this power, high nature, not exactly supernatural, you may say, because supernatural may lead to God, but some kind of spiritual thing. You know, that is metaphysics beyond physics. What is physics? Physics, that is something that you can prove. But always human beings have believed that whatever is proved becomes science. But there are certain things which we have not been able to prove, but we believe we have some faith that something is there. And that search has been persistent, continuous to find what is there and in different faiths, different beliefs in gods, we've searched for that. OK, some people think that it is God. Some say, you know, it's some uh, kind of uh, power that we do not understand. Something is there. So that is what metaphysical is. So metaphysical anguish is to be found in theater of abs absurd. Like, absurd is ridiculous. So everything, you know, you find no reason why these things are happening, opposed to reason. So metaphysical anguish means that uh, a man, man is sad because he's unable to find uh, and unable to believe that there is something that may justify right and wrong, that may justify, uh, that may, you know, develop man's understanding of how to live in this world. 
that may give some meaning to life, that may give purpose to life. So this is not there. So basically man is frustrated. He is in anguish. He is sad. He is frustrated. He is depressed because there is no uh, uh, no anchor. You know, a ship. How does ship stand on the shore, on the port? When ship does not float in the sea and is uh, stationed, is uh, placed in uh, at the shore at the port, there is an anchor. Anchor would hold the ship. In the similar way, man who is born on the earth find try to find uh, find some anchor. You know that uh, when we are sad, we believe okay things will be right because uh, someone is watching us. But that someone is missing. You don't have faith, and you find that reason is also not working. Science is also not working everywhere. We'll see how this uh, comes in the play. OK, that senselessness of life, anguishness. We are anguished as the senselessness of life. Life or the man's existence itself seems to be absurd without any sense. Let me begin with the presentation and the things will become clear because this is a play I uh, think for BA it's really uh, you should be given more cheerful things to study. <laughs> OK, and for MA it would have been better if it would have been in MA syllabus, but then see the picture itself shows the absurdity in 21st century. Even in 21st century you see. Man is Materialistically, he, he, he has accomplished so much. Ma'am, okay. why this picture? Can you tell later? This is what I am trying to explain. Materialistically, man has become so successful, right? And every person is just rushing to, towards something. OK, but even if a person has achieved the goal, is he satisfied today? Okay. There's always we are we want to go and uh, we want to go somewhere. We are traveling somewhere. Metaphorically, we are traveling somewhere. But what has been accomplished? We are waiting for something. And for what are we waiting? That particular never comes, never arrives. So waiting for good. D silent. Waiting for good. Right. Now, yes, Godot go somewhat rep, rep, uh, you know resembles God also, but that is just you know leave it. Don't pay attention to what I have said. Let's see what is there. Introduction. I, I feel like that has lots yes, of interpretation yes, or good fortune or uh, good uh, or as you said, God. It has various interpretations. Like something good is going to happen. That is. Uh, we have, uh, see, all of us are waiting. OK, for what? Let's come to the play and then we can decide that because this is open. This is open. Critics are giving various meanings of Godot. OK, yeah, and uh, I'll give you I'll give you what answer Samuel Beck Beckett himself said when he was asked that uh, what is Godot in your play? What did he say? That also we shall see. So the theme, yeah. So the themes of uh, all the Beckett's work, whether it is novel or it's uh, it's drama, it's always the problems which are faced by the modern man. The three terms that I said you should remember, they are th these are the terms: search for self, hollowness of Western culture, absurdity of man. Okay, themes are very serious. You will find humor in his work. But that humor that you find is always very dark humor. This difference between humor and dark humor. Humor when you cheerfully laugh at something. You dark humor means uh, uh, you, 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 you laugh, but at the same time, you know, you are not very comfortable with that kind of something shakes within. This you will see in the play. 
So this phrase absurd drama or theater of the absurd. And his is black comedy, no? His work. Yes, yes, you can say black comedy. Of course. Dark. It's dark humor, black comedy. OK, fine. They are more or less same. So the absurd drama, this term, uh, you know, this uh, the theater of the absurd was the book which was published in 1961. Martin Eslin was the writer. Right from here. Uh, this kind of name was assigned to such kind of place. Right. Samuel Becker is famous for creating new kinds of place. He experimented with the stage and a blue new soul into it. You know, uh, in Shakespeare's time, Renaissance drama, even in later dramas, you see that the stage is so much decorated, characters are so much, and then stage is full of so many uh, things will, would be, uh, you know, shown in the uh, on the theater. But his, his, drama, his, his dramas come in the category of minimalistic plays. Minimalistic lifestyle is now, you know, it's gaining so popularity. You know what is minimal? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, the, the least. The use of least. least. Yes, yes. See, even in dresses, you see. Just for example, if you see Renaissance drama or you see any Victorian dresses, so sirpat jo lagate na kitni tarah ke hats and caps hote na. Too much of decorated, and then there will be feather on it. There will be so many glittery things on it, like that. Okay. And you now, what French. kind of what kind of you know? And if you see French uh, French caps now, France, which is leading the world in uh, the world of fashion, that is you know, it's it's simply a cut that seems so aesthetic, so beautiful. There will be nothing too much embedded and embossed and engrossed into the things that is not there. So that is minimalistic. Furniture, no. the furniture no. if you see these days. That is also minimalistic. Like uh, if you see sofa, there were so many carvings and things were stuck on it. You know, they were very bulky. And now the furniture that comes, they are so sleek in design. No, if a cut hoga, a curve hoga, ya straight lines hogi, and it seems aesthetically so pleasing to us. So basically, that is what is minimalistic. That minimum use of the furniture is there. Minimum, uh, the lights are just you know what is required, not too much. So the he is the one who made so many changes in drama. Action was the vital element of every drama in the beginning. The wars were shown, some kind of action was shown. Now Samuel Beckett, he ignored the concept of action. That is why I said that Aristotle told so many, he laid so many uh, rules and uh, regulations about drama, but Samuel Beckett, he ignores the concept of action. He says that there can be drama without action. There is no action in his play. And only two characters are there in the play. But still audience, they watch these plays. So basically, theme of boredom. I think someone is joining in the lobby. Okay. Theme of boredom you find in his place. Okay, then his place are not just watched but experienced. Experienced because King Lear we may watch, but when he shows his characters, we feel that this is the condition of each and every man today, whichever social class, whatever um, race, whatever that the person may belong. But this is a story of every man. The only thing is that the person who is watching the play should be educated so that he or she can understand the deep meaning of every dialogue. The dialogues are heavy with meaning. They are heavy with meaning because they are very symbolic. So in order to understand those symbols, 
those hidden meanings in the language. We need knowledge. OK, so in this yes, way, Samuel Beckett gave new dimension to theater. So his contribution in this context can never be underestimated. His plays, they lack plot. First, we said that they lack action, and then we say that it lacks plot. Aristotle talks about plot. They not only lack action, they don't not only lack plot, they also lack characterization. There's no story in them. He is not a storyteller. He is not sketching characters. No physical description, nothing of that sort. OK, so what is audience doing basically in his play? Only the. Minimal character. Or minimal story element that is there in the play. OK. So since there is no action, character is not identified by the action. He does not reveal their real identity. You know, some playwrights, they beautifully, you know, their art of characterization is so good. All the characters, they are portrayed in a sun, such a wonderful way. Nora. See the characterization of uh, uh, all the uh, all the characters in that play. But Be uh, Beckett, Samuel Beckett, he hides the identities of his character. There's no plot development like, uh, you know, as Aristotle said that how the in the first act, the characters are introduced, how they should be climax and then uh, nemesis comes upon how catharsis is taking place. There's no such thing. His plays, they start with a problem and they end with a problem. That is why I see these cards. The ending point, starting point, no one knows, but they are simply as you watch the road of any in any metro city, if you are standing on a uh, some, you know, a 10th floor or 30th floor or maybe 50th floor of any uh, multi story in uh, Mumbai or uh, NCR, and then you watch the cars going. Right, yes. all all the vehicles going during night, and you wonder that even during this hour, so many people they are written from their work, or maybe they are written from some movie, maybe they would have met someone, and now they are going somewhere. Oh, finally, what are they up to? So they start with a problem, and it ends with the same. Then Samuel Beckett's language is very interesting. It's simple language yet symbolic. See, no artistry is there. Its language is simple, but yet it's very symbolic. And on surface, if you see, you see that it's meaningless. There is no meaning coming out of it. So dialogues are very rational, symbolic dialogues, yet they apparently do not seem useful. Every word is a symbol. And so audience have to work. They cannot, audience cannot sit idly, passively in his uh, play. They have to work. They have to dig out the meanings. What is the character or the playwright trying to say? What could be the possible meanings? So in this way, language also seems ridiculous because you don't get the meaning. He does not explain. It is on the audience that how they respond to his dialogues. So these dialogues are very short. 
unless some character is just trying to explain something, they are very short. Okay. So it seems that the characters are not giving any message to the audience, but just passing time. They are, it is not like uh, in other plays, as you see, uh, when the characters are speaking, it seems like they are indirectly telling the audience, they are giving information to the audience. But here, just dialogues go on and on as if, uh, you know, they are just trying to pass away the time. But if you understand the meaning of each dialogue, then they seem to be very argumentative. So many arguments coming out of it. Because they are trying to find the meaning of life. Purpose of life. OK, so till here we do today. And uh, I think uh, at present you may not have any uh, question to ask because we have just uh, started the play. But uh, at the same time, uh, if you can get the text, I don't know whether it's available on uh, internet or not. Just search it. So if it's available, then it would be good. And you go through the um, this uh, play, but I would like to go through each and every dialogue in the class because these dialogues meaning has to come out of these dialogues. So we shall uh, do each an explanation of each and every line of this play. Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. Right. So you search the play and uh, you read it on your own so that while we are dealing with it in the class, then uh, you can also um, share what kind of meaning have you, you know, inferred from the dialogues. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, then bye bye. Thank you, ma'am. Go and have your dinner, though it's very early for dinner. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, bye.